right outside Zion National Park and getting ready to set out on a four to five week trek to Green River, Utah. Day three, day six. Day nine. Day 12. Day 15. Day 18. Day 21. Day 24. Day 27. Day 30. day 31. I did not make it to my cache last night. Once the sun popped out, I decided to stop short, put out the solar panel and try to get some energy. It takes a lot of solar juice to keep this operation going and uh, I'm really struggling this year. I'm running short. And a day like yesterday that had very little sunshine makes it all that much harder. So anyway, I have a little bit of juice in my cameras and all my gear now so I can keep talking to you for a little while and then when I get up to the cache as you can see it's a nice sunny day today so I will put out the solar panel again and get a little more energy hopefully keep this whole train going all right let's walk Coming up on another volcanic dike. This region must have been really active. It's a good one. It's so vertical. The basalt or the hardened lava there is a lot stronger than the uh, surrounding elements. That's why it survived the test of time. That's really cool. All these big black boulders are probably lava bombs that were spewed out at the same time the dikes were being created. You see them all across the landscape. There's another small dike there in the background. Okay, we've made it to Red Point. Now just a little more road walking and we'll be at our cache and then it'll be cross country again. I have reached Mustn't Touch It Reservoir. Isn't it beautiful? I'm gonna have to come back here with some jet ski sometime. That may not happen, but what this place is good for is hiding a cache. Look in there, that's my cache. I usually don't like to hide caches at named locations, but this is one of the few trees around. I like to have a tree to have some shade. And as I said earlier, I was afraid this place would be scorching hot when I got here. So they had to do. So this was another one of my bag caches. So everything here is packed up and taken away and I don't have to come back here. Again, this is just for camouflage. But yeah, got some water. All right, another Powerade. And then the food goes inside this shipping bag. That's extra strong and double wrapped. Not one. But two, and then this holds about three days of food. We've got the freeze dried food that's been repackaged to save space, and a bunch of bars and snacks. And that's it. That'll keep me going for another three days. So, this is a small cache. All right, that's the report for now. Pack it up and let's go. Taking a shortcut, I'm walking right across the reservoir. Oh. 
of course in winter times so there is actually water here. Monsoon season I'll probably fill it up. It's never gonna be a deep lake, but uh, it'll be something. Over in the distance, you can see Mustn't Touch It Dunes, just a huge sand slide that goes up against the cliff. It's a pretty cool site. I went by it on my drive in to set the cache. It's worth checking out, but we're not going by it this time. Instead, we are walking across this treeless plain, following some cow trails. You can see why I didn't want to be out here if it was 90 some degrees, because there is no shade to be had. I'm quite fortunate it's a cool day. There's one lone tree out here. So I'm headed towards it to take a break. Oh my God, look at the cow sh Seems like the cows want a little more shade too because they all must hang out here. Wow, that's, that's kind of crazy. All right, well, looks like under the tree is okay. So a crazy thing happened when I was out here putting out my caches, what, 31 days ago. Actually, I got a flat tire. <laughs> and it's a terrible place to have a flat tire. And my Jeep does not have a spare. I'd never used it, but it came with one of those uh, fix-it kits. A little, um, it's like a plug and an air compressor, uh, fix-a-flat type thing. I was freaking out because I thought, this is so screwed up. This is not going to work. I'm in the middle of nowhere. This could really ruin my hike because I may have to get towed out of here, which would be crazy expensive, and then get a new tire and... You know, I'm in a place that's so remote. I was about 10 miles from I-70, and it's that stretch of I-70 that has nothing around. Emory is probably another 15 miles away, and really to get to a bigger town like Green River is like 60 miles away the other way. So yeah, it was a mess, and I was freaking out. And, um, but I found that kit, started the process, and a rancher comes by, <laughs> stops, wants to know what's going on, and he can see I'm trying to fix my tire. Uh, asked why I was out here and all that. And I told him about my hike. He thought I was crazy. Uh, but he said he was going to go check on some cows and he would come back by later, an hour or so, and see if I was still there. And if I needed help, he would take me to Emory, which is where he lived, and help me out. So I said, that's awesome. So uh, I appreciated that. And uh, he gave me a beer for good luck. <laughs> he had a cold beer with him. And uh, it, was, it was good. Turns out the fix a flat worked. I can't believe it, but yeah, that goo or whatever that goes inside the tire sealed it up. It held enough air pressure to get me to Green River. Yeah, it worked. I cannot believe it. One thing the rancher said that I loved, it was a windy, terrible day, like so many have been over this last month. <laughs> but he's talking about finding his cows, and he said, any self-respecting cow is in a ditch today. <laughs> and that just killed me as a quote. Uh, anyway, so I'm glad that the fix a flat worked and I will always carry it with me and yeah, glad that I was able to continue. All right. That's the thought for now. Top the little mesa, need to go down now and across this little valley. There's a um, spring out there I want to check out called Ant Spring. Even though I'm okay on water, I'm curious to see what it's like. And then to that little cinder cone out there, it's called Pissant Knoll or Passant if it's French, I'm not sure. And then beyond that, we're headed over there into that interesting topography towards Hebes Canyon or Hebes Canyon. Not sure about the pronunciation of that either. And that's what's on the agenda. All right, let's go do it. There are moments like this. It's so quiet. Like when the wind stops, you really can't hear anything. There's no bugs, there's no uh, birds. Just this crazy silence. The 
So I'm getting close to Ant Spring and there's some horses up here. So I don't know if it's wild horses or sometimes what they call rancher's horses. Kind of like a free range horse. Looks like there might be some waterworks by the spring as well. Uh, Mr. Horse does not like me being here. Hey there, can I check out the water? Oh, hi cow. Whole bunch of cows down in the trees too. Hi there. How's it going? Oh, and a dead cow over here. Okay, maybe I'll just leave these guys alone. They don't like me being here and I don't need the water. Horse is starting to follow me. Hi, horse. Well, I don't know if I've made a friend or an enemy. What's going on? You can't follow me. I have no food for you. I'm at one of the more interesting sites I'll pass on this hike. Check this out. It's the grave site for Razor the Desert Horse. Born about 1950, died 1989. Must have been a pretty special horse. It's one heck of a place to be remembered. I wonder if that was his great-grandchild horse that chased me off from Ant Spring. Someone must have loved Razor a lot because it took a lot of work. Special thanks to my buddy Udink, aka Dennis, who told me about this site. He's got an interesting blog on a lot of the sites throughout the San Rafael Swell. Check it out if you get a chance. All right, we better get back to hiking. I got another storm could be headed our way. We need to get over here into these black rocks in the canyon. Oh, more horses. Hi guys. Man, I do not want to get taken out by a horse. These guys seem aggressive. Are you guys related to Razor? I just went by to pay my respects. Just passing by. The colt seems semi-aggressive as well. Usually the little ones will shy away. Wow, look ahead at our changing landscape. When I was talking to the rancher who offered to help me with the tire, he asked which direction I was headed and I told him this way. And he said, oh, you're gonna go into the Black Rocks then. And I said, yeah, just thinking it'd be more of those same lava bomb round rocks. But yeah, this is much more black rock than I was anticipating. Again, looks like multiple dikes and possible old lava flows here. Cool territory. And of course, the two black horses went right down the way I hoped to go. I can see them way out in the distance there. I don't know why animals always scurry away from me in the exact direction I want to go. I mean, I know a horse is a big animal, but... Is it that big? Did they all go in the same spot? Very odd. Okay, we're working our way down towards Hebe Canyon. Or Hebe's. Something like that. That volcanic dike is awesome. That ridge line is so cool. It's just like a wall. It's looking like a pretty cool canyon. It doesn't look very hiker friendly though. I might keep following this horse trail which might skirt a lot of it. Some horse hair. <laughs> wow. It's very strong, coarse. Feels almost like wire. Okay, still heading down alongside the canyon. It looks like a cool canyon, but I think just walking the edge is better. Quicker anyway.
really well defined trail here. But I think it's all by horses, because I only see horse prints. Two brown ones now. They were staring me down. Just want to come through here. Thank you very much. Okay, I think I'm over the horses. I would like to get around them and down this canyon without getting bit or a hoof in my face. I'm guessing they must really be wild. Still following the horse trails and the horses down alongside Hebe's Canyon towards Willow Spring Canyon out in the colorful painted desert there ahead. Two brown horses are staying about two hills ahead of me. Every time I catch up, they take off again. They would only go to one side or the other, they'd be fine and I'd be past them, but nope, on the same way. Okay, now we're officially dropping down into the main canyon. Okay, we are down in Willow Springs Wash now. Gonna head down canyon. Day 31. So the wash I'm in, Willow Springs Wash, does have a really big catch basin. Even that, it surprises me. That's some serious effects of a flood right there. That much water in this canyon would be quite the sight to see. We're getting near the end of the canyon. It's, it's a pretty nice canyon. I kind of like it. Starting to have a bit of an Escalante vibe here at the bottom end of Willow Springs Wash. Or Escalante vibe. Escalante vibe. I'm never going to learn to say it that way. To Muddy Creek Canyon. Nice open spot. I don't see Muddy Creek yet because it's over there 
against that far wall and that brush. We'll go check it out. We have to go this way, down the canyon. I've come across the wild cows of the Muddy Creek. Cows. Ah, uh, there's the Muddy. It's a little bit bigger than I expected. I think I might hold off getting my feet well till tomorrow. Cause tomorrow I'm gonna be in and out of it all day. But it's still chilly. It's supposed to be warmer tomorrow too. I checked the weather via satellite. 